Okay, so I'm going to be talking about Hebrews 10.25, one of the most misused, abused verses today. Um, it is like the church house verse. So I'll go ahead and read it. Hebrews 10.25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So many people will look at this and they will say, See, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. That is a command from God that you need to go to a church building on Sunday. Okay, And there are false teachers that teach that and they, their people are brainwashed. You know, thousands of people are brainwashed into believing that that is what this verse says. Okay, Nowhere in scripture will you find anything about this modern church system. Okay, um, it is not talking about going to a church building. You won't find that idea anywhere in Scripture. Okay? <clears throat> because if someone is to say that this means that you need to go to a church building, well then the question is, which one? And, um... So, you know, they're either going to be like, well, you need to go to mine, or, you know, it doesn't really matter, you just need to go to one. So are you telling me that doctrine doesn't matter? Uh... The Bible says that doctrine does matter, and <clears throat> the Bible doesn't teach denominations at all, okay? Um, Christ is not divided. Uh, Paul asks that rhetorical question in 1 Corinthians 1.13. He says, is Christ divided? Obviously, he's not, okay? Um, there is one gospel. There is, you know, one way. There is, you know, there are the doctrines that the Bible teaches uh, it doesn't teach multiple different things. It doesn't contradict itself. Uh, so nowhere in Scripture are denominations taught. Okay, denominations are secular, pagan. You know, they come from the mother harlot, uh, the Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church. Denominations are her little whores. Okay, they are Protestant churches. Whether they claim to be Protestant or not, they are Protestant. They come from the Catholic Church. If you trace back their history, you'll find out that the person who founded a specific denomination, that they split off from the Roman Catholic Church. In some way, shape, or form, they, it'll be traced back to the Roman Catholic Church. Okay. Um, they all have uh, false doctrines, unbiblical practices, um, so you're telling me that the Bible says that I need to go to a place that teaches false doctrine and teaches unbiblical practices. Okay, I don't think so. That's not how it works, okay? So, uh, what does this verse really mean? Um, you know, and, okay, this is telling me that I need to go to a church building, you know, well, I can't find anything about a church building or this whole system in scripture, you know. Why don't you show me a pulpit, pews, and steeples in the scripture, okay? And, and Nehemiah mentions pulpit, but the person preaching is standing on the pulpit, not behind the pulpit. You see, um, show me where a stage is called an altar. Show me where they have altar calls. Show me age segregation. Show me tithing for the New Testament church. Um, I had someone tell me, I was telling them, you know, there's no tithing for the New Testament church in the Bible. And uh, they never even tithed money in the Old Testament. They, they tithed uh, livestock and stuff. And this person told me, well, they didn't have money back then. I mean, that is the most ignorant thing that you could say. Um, it talks about money in Genesis, okay? They had shekels. Uh, they obviously did have money in them. The reason why they tithed cattle and stuff is because that's what they were commanded to tithe, okay? If you look at Leviticus 27.30, you'll see it's talking about grain and fruit and cattle and stuff, uh, and, and herd, you know, the livestock, okay? There is no New Testament command to tithe, okay? That is a gross... Uh, perversion of scripture, and that is involved with pretty much all of these church buildings, okay? So tithing is automatically one thing that, is, that you're going to get into with all these church buildings. So you're telling me that, you know, I need to go to some church building that's not mentioned in scripture, and that I need to tithe, you know, that, that goes against scripture, because you're putting people in bondage, okay? And um, the Bible says... You know, in Colossians 2.16, don't let anyone judge you for any holy day or anything. You're not, you don't have to keep the Sabbath day. So if you don't have to keep the Sabbath day, then why is it a sin if you don't go to a church building on Sunday? Why is it a sin if you don't tithe when it's not commanded in Scripture? Okay? If you don't have to keep the Sabbath day or, you know, the old laws and stuff. 
okay, now all of a sudden you're going to force going to a church building on someone, you're going to force tithing on somebody, um, that doesn't work, okay, that's satanic, that's bondage, that goes completely against what scripture teaches, um, you know, show me 501c3, uh, where, <clears throat> where the church goes to the government, you know, for the head, the, the government's the head of the church for tax exemption, and show me, you know, CEOs and secretaries in the Bible, uh, you know, it's not there, okay? This whole modern church system, and I could go on and on, and I will do plenty of teachings on that, but there's just so much that is corrupt about these church buildings. Churchianity is Satan's counterfeit of true Christianity. It is Satan's deception, okay, period. They are unredeemable, and they are purely satanic and wicked. And if you're going to a church building, no matter what one it is, you need to get out, okay? And you might need to get saved. You need to read the scriptures. That's what you need to do, okay? Um, so, you know, it says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. Who is ourselves? Ourselves are saved people who abide by the scriptures, okay? So some uh, corrupt pastor who, who teaches tithing and all these unbiblical practices and all these heresies, he's trying to tell you that you need to go to a church building. He is not involved in ourselves, okay? Ourselves are saved people, okay? Uh, so, but what is really being talked about here, okay? This is really talking about apostasy, and this is talked about a lot in Hebrews, uh, the book is written to Hebrew Christians, okay, they were Jews, they converted to Christianity, and some of them are wanting to go back to Judaism, okay, because if they go back to Judaism, then they're not going to face persecution and everything else, so they have people who forsook the assembly, when it, when it means not forsaking, that means completely forsaking, um, you know, Christianity, completely completely, not just forsaking, uh, not just forsaking gathering together, it means completely forsaking Christianity as a whole, and I think that, uh, you know, 2 Timothy 4.10, uh, I'll go there, 2 Timothy 4.10 is kind of like this, it says, For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed unto Thessalonica, uh, Crescens, and Galatia, Titus and unto Dalmatia. Anyways, so Demas forsook Paul. So, and I take that to mean that Demas was never saved, okay? He apostatized from the faith. He loves the current world, okay? So, this is talking about someone who was never saved. They pretended to be saved. They professed to be saved. Um, they had, um, you know, some kind of mental knowledge of Christ, but they never had, they never took it to heart. They never got born again, okay? The Bible doesn't teach that you can lose salvation, and a lot of people that say you can lose salvation, they'll take these apostasy verses that, that talk about people forsaking the faith, and they'll say that, you know, they were saved, and they forsook it, and then they lost their salvation. That's not what the Bible teaches, okay? These people forsook it because they were never a part of it to begin with, okay? And then it was just, it was eventually revealed. <laughs> So, the not forsaking of the assembly of ourselves together is actually talking about forsaking the whole faith, okay? Um, and, and, a, and, a big, and a big part of this, too, is it's talking about but exhorting one another, okay? Um, that's really one of the main purposes of this verse, is that we need to exhort one another, okay? Um, Hebrews 3.13 says they exhorted one another daily, okay? Is that what the modern church systems do today? You know, they gather once, twice a week, okay? It's not daily, so... And it's funny how, you know, they'll try to push this verse on you. They'll twist it and pervert it and try to hammer it down on you and try to guilt you into coming to a church building and everything else, you know. Um, but they... They'll... You know, they'll disregard other verses and stuff. They'll, they'll pervert this, twist it, try to push it on you and guilt you into it. But, you know, they'll say, you need to go to a church building, forsake not the assembling, you know. <laughs> but what about uh, suffer not a woman to teach? You know, a lot of these buildings, they'll allow women preachers, you know. But then you try to tell them about First Timothy 2.12, suffer not a woman to teach. But, oh, oh, no, see, you know, Paul was a woman hater or whatever. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, but uh, the scripture was written by holy men and stuff. And, you know, oh, that was for certain women at a certain time and everything. But Paul goes on to explain that it was because Eve was beguiled first. And I'm pretty sure that that's still true today. Um, so, 
you know, they'll try to they'll try to just, just get rid of these things and stuff because the fact of the matter is all they care about is wanting you to come to the building and to give money for the tithes that's not in the Bible and then to, you know, invite other people so the process continues, there's more people, more money, and, you know, uh, that's all they really care about. Um, they don't care about holy living, they don't care about really whole, abiding by the scriptures, you know, uh, going out and making disciples and all that, they don't do that. They don't care about holy living, you know, as long as you're coming on Sunday and stuff, that's what really matters. As long as you're coming on Sunday and putting money in the plate, then, you know, it doesn't matter if you go out and you fornicate during the week, and if you're a sodomite or if you're a drunkard or, you know, if you don't believe that Scripture's inspired, it doesn't really matter, you know. There's there's no church discipline, you're not going to be rebuked, you know. We're not going to put put that wicked person away from among us, you know, like Scripture says to. Or, we, we accept everybody, and, you know, we just want you to come and listen, you know, enjoy the show, the entertainment, you know, just sit down and, you know, just be a part of it. You know, that's all it's really about, is just coming and giving your money, okay? Um, it's completely unbiblical. Every, all the church buildings, you need to forsake those places. They are the snares of Satan. And Hebrews 10.25 is not telling you to do that, okay? To exhort means to strongly encourage or urge someone to do something. And, you know, it says, as you see the day approaching, and there's, you know, some controversy what the day is. Is it, you know, the day of the Lord's return, or is it, uh, you know, when the temple is, gonna, is destroyed, you know, and the Lord's return is imminent, you know, without warning and stuff, so how can we see it approaching, you know, I think that it is the, the return of the Lord. Uh, we just kind of know that we're in the end times. Um, so, you know, and it's exhorting one another to to stay stay in the faith, you know, to, to continue doing the things of the Lord, the works for the Lord. Um, and it's about fellowship. Um uh, you know, I believe that, that Christians should have fellowship. If you know Christian brothers or sisters, you know, you should have fellowship with them. Um, I don't think that it has to be in person either. Um, <clears throat> but that's the thing, too. These these church buildings, they don't even have fellowship. You can go in there for weeks and weeks and months and months and years, and no one can even talk to you. And if they do talk to you, you know, it's like, hey, how you doing? You know, I like your tie. Uh uh, how's your job going, uh, did, did you, did you watch that game last night, uh, no, I'm not a sports idolater, did you, uh, watch that wicked television show last night, no, uh, you know, it's not going to be about scripture, it's not going to be about Bible doctrine, Bible doctrine is like foreign, you know, it's like a foreign term in church buildings, you know, Bible doctrine, what's that, I don't know, you know, they don't even read the Bible there, they don't even know, they're not encouraged to really, you know, don't, don't study into that and stuff, you know, leave that to the pastor, you know, he's, he's got the degree and everything, he's licensed, you know, you just leave the, the Bible study into him, you know, he knows everything, uh, don't, don't, don't question the man of God, you know, <laughs> it's completely ridiculous, I mean, the, the deception and the brainwashing is just way high, um, it's really unfortunate, but, you know, it's what people want, you know, they, they, they want to be deceived, you know, um, it talks about that in the Bible, you know, that people are going to choose their own deception, they, they want that, um, you know, and, and this verse, you know, it pertains to the first century church, we have to take that into account and stuff, you know, how did they communicate back then, you know, um, how did they learn, uh, the Word of God and stuff, you know, maybe some of them had the Word, but I don't think it was available as it is today, so how did they communicate? They could write letters to each other, or they could assemble, I mean, <laughs> they didn't have cell phones, they didn't have internet like we do today, so I think that those are, you know, those are good means of communicating today, you can communicate over the internet, you can still exhort one another through messages, you know, you don't have to be together in a group, in a place, you know, they pretty much had to then, because that's all they had, you know, you have to take this into account, and like I said, that's not even really the focus of this, the focus is, you know, don't, don't go back to Judaism, don't forsake the, the faith altogether, you know, don't apostatize, but, you know, exhort one another, continue to exhort one another, in the scripture, you know, things of God, things of the word, you know, not just worldly things, that's all that's talked about in church buildings today. It's worldly. It's all worldly. Um, 
there are so many thoughts on this verse, you know, and it says to assemble, and if they're going to force you on this, like it's a church building, you know, I've already said, you know, well, which church, and that they're all heretical, so that, that can't be, you know, also, you know, when do we assemble, uh, at what time, you know, where, how long, how often, okay, these things aren't answered, okay, if this was really a strict thing that we really need to do, then I think it would be a lot more specific than this, you know. You can, can you assemble once a year? Can you assemble once every two years? Can you assemble for ten minutes? Uh, you know, where? Uh, what time? Does it have to be at Sunday at uh, ten in the morning every time on Wednesday? You know, like I said, we're not supposed to keep the Sabbath day, but all of a sudden now you have to go to a church building on Sunday. Okay, that's bondage. This is a gross perversion of Scripture. You know, and the Bible says that people will rest the scriptures to their own destruction. And there's not to be any private interpretation of scripture. You know, 2 Peter 1.20 um, Psalm 26 says, you know, I will not sit with the wicked. That's what church buildings are. They're filled with lost people. The people who go there are lost. 2 Corinthians 6.14 says, What communion has light with darkness? Okay. Have no, don't, don't uh, yoke with unbelievers. Okay, that's all that's in the church buildings. Because if you are truly saved and you're studying the scriptures, it's going to lead you out of these wicked satanic church buildings. Period. Well, I read, uh, I saw a couple videos of some people that made comments that I liked. I've already kind of covered some of them, but I'm going to just read over it. Some things I might have already mentioned. You know, um... Now, someone said that verse 22 in Hebrews 10 talks about a heart towards God. Verse 23 talks about a mouth to the world. Verse 24 talks about works in the church. Okay, um, These are the things that you know, you're know you to exhort one another with, that you're to focus on here. Um, it's talking about Jews that are trying to go back to Judaism. It's not if you don't attend a Billy Bob church building ran by an uneducated, ignorant person and pay him a 10% tithe with offerings on top that you're condemned by God. Okay, uh, This has nothing to do with buildings or organizations. Um, the atmosphere is controlled in church buildings. And I've heard it said that, you know, people think that they experience God in a church building. On Sunday, they go there to experience God. So that makes the person who runs the whole show a very high, important person because, you know, he holds the keys to the, the place where, you know, God is experienced, where God is. You know, it's, it's a satanic deception. It's delusion, okay? Um, it's all about money, control, bullying, and there's no real, real fellowship or witnessing. Um, you know... These buildings are more like country clubs, they're like concerts, shows, uh, it's a religion industry, it's an entertainment center, okay? A man goes to school just like a doctor or a lawyer to be a professional pastor. He pays the money, gets the training, he learns how to entertain people, he learns how to use the scripture to collect money, learns how to further the agenda of the business he is in, he gets a degree, permission from the government, he opens a business that is licensed and authorized by the government, he is 501c3 covered, a tax write-off for that business. He uses the Word of God to entertain people. Each denomination has their different ways in how they entertain people and their different traditions, how they depart from the Word of God. And the people in these denominations are lost. They are dead people. It's like the congregation of the dead, Proverbs 21.16. Okay. Um, Hebrews 10.25 is written for Christians. And the people who are trying to push this on you to say that you need to go to a church building, they are not Christians. Okay, so uh, don't listen to biblical interpretations from people who aren't saved. Um, but anyways, I've said, focused a lot on church buildings. I'll do that a lot more, but I want to focus really on this verse, Hebrews 10.25. It's talking about apostasy. It's talking about people completely leaving the faith. It's not a command to assemble every Sunday. Um, the idea is, you know, have fellowship. Um, exhort one another. So, I hope you learned something. Anyway, I hope you stay away from church buildings. Encourage others to stay away from them. Leave them. Forsake them. So, thanks for watching. God bless. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.